What's going on, Grace family? Welcome to my YouTube channel, God Good Grace Ministry. It's your host, your favorite preacher, <laughs> Jeffrey Wiley. Man, I am just excited and happy to be here. Happy to be bringing to you a brand new teaching, something that God has been laying on my heart a while ago. I already had the notes and everything. I just haven't had time to to really go over it and put it down. But today is that day where I had some time and, and, and God has just been moving in my life. It's a little testimony that God has been working. We've been going through some things down here, starting the year off pretty rough, but God is always faithful, always faithful. So I just wanna say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for not unsubscribing from the channel and stuff like that, and just being patient with me. Thank you so much. Hopefully we can get back to every Monday and, and, and where I can just bring a new message, a new a new thought or whatever. But just stay tuned to Fast Five Friday. I'll be trying to get those out as fast as possible with my wife, Summer Wiley from Real Life Experience. But today we're gonna talk about God is and so are we, you know. And you know, as I bring this message, I'm reminded by conversations I be having with people that be having a parent missing out of the house, whether it be the mother or be the father or both. You know, they always come and tell me that they they feel like something is missing from their life. They feel like that they're not complete or they're not whole. And I I grew up with both parents in the house, so I you know, I sympathize I sympathize with them, but it's hard for me to imagine. How, how life is without a father or how life is without a mother and uh as an adult my parents they split but still they they're they they're engulfed in my life still so I, I haven't missed a beat but talking to these people you know uh, you know watching my, my own stepdaughter you know she grew up in the house we gave her everything she wanted but she always felt like she didn't know who she was you know where she come from or, or heritage or anything and she always felt like she she was missing something even people that that get adopted you know what I'm saying and, and they have loving families you know and they still feel like something is missing and, and stuff so I started to think what about God how do people feel when they don't grow up without God when they, have, when, they have, when they have God missing from their life, do they feel the same incomplete? You know, do they feel like they missing something? You know, and there's people that, that are saved, like me. I got saved in 92, 94, and I always tell people, I didn't start having a relationship with God until 2010. And that's because where I got saved at, that church didn't show me or teach me anything about who God is or who I am in God. So I, I was missing something completely, but I didn't even know I was missing anything. I didn't even know that things were missing from my life because I wasn't taught. But I was taught don't wear don't wear shorts. Girls, women had to wear skirts. Don't go to movies. The, um, you know, you got to pray until you prayed up. Make sure you get a breakthrough. Like all that stuff was so confusing to me. You know, so it caused me to you know to look at God as a harsh God. Or God, that's you know, what I'm saying if I don't pray hard enough, that He's not gonna hear me. If I don't, if I if I didn't read ten verses or ten chapters a day, He's not gonna hear me. You know, He's gonna turn a blind eye to me. And so, so that's how I grew up. You know, and I always had these questions: Is God a good God? I wonder if you got these same questions. Is God a a God of is is God the God of the Old Testament? You know, putting diseases on you. You know, you know, having you stone your children if they if they they get rebellious. It, it, it's God judging me for every mistake. Cause see, that's where I was brought up in the, in that Pentecostal state where every mistake I made, I had to get it under the blood. I had to get it forgiven before the rapture take place. If I make a mistake, and the rapture take place right when I make a mistake. I'm gonna miss the mark. You know, and that that kind of condemnation boy that kind of the pressure it had me not knowing who God is and therefore had me not knowing who who I am so today I, I want to I hope that I could get a message through to you 
If we don't know who our Heavenly Father is, how we see Him will affect how we respond to Him and others. So let's take a, a deep dive in who God is and hopefully we can find out who we are. So Lord God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your son Jesus Christ that came and took my, my place and paid the penalty for me that I may have eternal life, eternal life in knowing you, Lord. Lord God, I pray that this, this message, this teaching come across uh, unhindered, Lord God, without confusion, Lord God, with power, Lord God. Lord, I'll, I'll pray that it break down barriers and, and, and remove and, and remove the hindrance of, of darkness from out of people's minds today, Lord God. And I just pray that you have your way. In Jesus' person, I pray. Amen. So let's get into it, great family. Let's get into it. And we're going to start off with God is light. God is light. Uh, God is light. And let's start with 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which I have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light. Underline that. And in him is no darkness at all. On the line at all. Not a little bit, not is it at all. God is light. And he fully represents what is good, pure, true, holy, and reliable. And when and that word pure means that is he's not mixed or dulled down. You know, he's one hundred percent. John 8, verse 12, Jesus speaks and declares, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Under the light of life. And that light of life means light which is life. We will have this light. That is life. See, I'm, I'm here to tell you that God's light alone can guide you out of darkness. Guide you out of your sin. Why? Because the light of God, it can expose good and it can expose bad. You should be able to see clearly what is of God and what is not. Let's keep on moving. John 1, 9. God is the true light. What does that mean? He is the genuine light. The perfect light. The steadfast light. You could depend on it. It's genuine. It's not made up. It's not artificial. When I come and I turn my light on my house, that's a light bulb creating light. It said when we get to heaven, there won't be no sun because God will be the light. He will be the light, the source of the light. He is the source of the light. And that light is genuine. It's perfect. There's no imperfection in the source of light. It is steadfast. It's a steadfast light, a reliable light, constantly. You don't have to worry about being shut off if you don't pay your bill, if you don't pay your tithes. In this light dwells eternal life. And that's in 1 Timothy 6.16. Said that that eternal life is in that light. And we're going to dig into what is that eternal life. God is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. As is the way, Jesus is our only path to the Father. Now some may argue that this path is too narrow. But in reality, it's wide enough for the whole world if the world would choose to accept it. As the truth, he is the reality of all God's promises. <laughs> In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, explains the truth perfectly to me. I feel this is the definition of what God's truth is. And it simply is, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He hath he said, and shall he not do, do it? Or has he spoken it, and, he, and shall he not make it good? To simplify it all up, God is a man of his word. God is of his word. As for life, he joins his divine life to ours, both now and eternally. And like I said, we're going to dig into that eternally. So let's take a, a, a look at life eternally, just a little bit closer. Turn with me to 1 John, chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life. And this is in his son. He that has the son has life. And he that has not the son of God has not the life. Let's explain a little bit more. Turn with me. To John 17, 3. And this is life. It means to know. To perceive. Recognize. Become acquainted with and understand. You, the only true and real God. And likewise, to know him. Jesus as the Christ the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. And that's the amplified part. So basically it's telling us eternal life is to know Christ. See, we all will live forever after this life, but life eternally is to have a one-on-one -on -one close relationship with God. Now, on this earth, and it continues on, and it never comes to an end. It would never stop. Psalms 118, verse 17 says, I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Now, I'm going to say this again. We all going to live forever. We are we're either going to live in the heaven or we're going to be in that, that dark, dark burning place where your worms never die, where the fires never close. Eternal. Eternal means forever. It never stops. It never stops. It goes on and on and on. There is no end to eternal. But eternal life means that we're going to be with God. We're going to have a close relationship with God. And that, to me, friend, is living. That is life eternal. To know God. And God let made it be that we can have eternal life now. We can get close and intimate with God now and not later. Mm, let's move on. Let's move on. God is love. God is love. And every time we hear that, we hear John 3, 16. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes on him will not perish, but have what? Eternal life. Right? Eternal life. But I like this one. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Said that he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Or we can say it like this, how, how the Amplifier said, who, He who does not love has not become acquainted with God. Has, does not and never did know him, for God is love. It, it doesn't say that God has the ability to love, but that God is the very essence of what love is. And what love, love is, I'm glad, I'm glad that you want to know what love is. So what is love? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 and 7 says, Charity suffers long. It's all about love. And it's kind. Charity envy is not. Charity vote is not itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seek is not her own. Is not easily provoked. We're talking about love still. Think is no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity. But rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things. Believe is all things. Hope is all things. Endure all things. This is what God is. The definition of God love is long endurance. I mean, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never envies nor boils over with jealousy. Is not both for vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. Love is not rude, unmannerly, and it does not act unbecomingly of itself. Love, God, love in us does not just exist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touched or faithful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil. It pays no attention to a suffer wrong. See, I, I like I like hearing all this about what love is. Because it tells me that God has all this. This is the essence of who he is. That he is patient with us. Long suffering with us. He's not prideful. He's not becoming of himself. He don't act he don't act in an un uh, civilized way. See, first John 4.12 says that no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. See, we can express God's love towards one another. See, the world might not have seen God, but they should have experienced God through us. Through our love. If we continue to read First John chapter 4, we'll come to one of my favorite verses, and I use this all the time, verse 17, and it simply says, herein is our love made perfect, made mature, has brought it to a completion, that we have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. <laughs> See, I came with some good news today. 
So, we're going to underline as he is, so are we in this world. See, now that you know who your heavenly father is, let me tell you something. As he is, so are we. Not just a little bit. Not halfway, y'all. But identical. 100% like Jesus. Now, I, I, I see people's eyes looking at me like they're caught in the headlight, like there's in the headlight. But just give me a little bit. Give me some grace here and let me explain this to you a little bit more. As the kids scream and play in the background, I'm recording. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5.17. And it says, Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previously moral and spiritual condition. So we we ain't gonna mistake what's taking place. It's the spiritual, I mean spiritual condition has passed away, and behold, the fresh and new has come. It had to come from somewhere because it wasn't here. It has come. Hmm. Let's keep going. We're going to build this. Now we go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Now as that, after that spirit has come, it said, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed. With the Holy Spirit of promise. So now that that new spirit done came. Altogether new. Now it's sealed. With the Holy Spirit of promise. You are you now have. God. Spirit. 100% identical. As he is. So are we. In this world. In you. Right now. And for those that think they don't have God's spirit. Romans 8 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So I'm going to ask you, who are you? Who are you? I'm going to tell you who you are. You are a child of the light. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5, which represent what is good once again, pure, true, holy, and reliable. You are on your way to heaven while you enjoying promises of God and enjoying eternal life that does not end. Right here on this earth. And you are loved John 3, 16. Too much life in this world lacking nothing. See, I like for Lyman when it says that the communication of thy faith may become effectually by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. See, this, this passage simply just tells us with this chapter 1, verse 6 of Philemon, of Philemon that you have to come to acknowledge What's already in you in Christ Jesus. Jesus is inside us. And, this, and what's in Jesus is in us. So start acknowledging who you are. Because you're just like your daddy. Hebrews 1 3, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Because as he is, so are we in this world. I just wanted to keep it real short 
And I want to bring it to you simple and plain. You might feel like you're incomplete, that you're missing something. But God tells us that you are a child of the light because God is light. God is the way, the truth, and the life. You have all this in you. And you are love because God is love. We have the ability to love others. So to the next time, Grace family, I hope you find this message to be very helpful. Pray on it. Do your own research who God is. I, I got so much more of God is faithful. God is patient. God is our friend. God is our, our average. Our, 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 God is our, 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 our judge, our lawyer. He fights for us. See you next time on God's Good Grace.